Hi everyone, welcome to my shop. This is going to be a video on the assembly of the Phoenix model 60cc Waco has 90 and a half inch wingspan. Uh, this is the guy right here on this manual. And before we get into that, on the unboxing video, I had some emails. Uh, I'm going to answer a couple questions. One was if, if I would uh, video my shop. I would do that, but it's way too cluttered at the moment to do a video on it. Uh, but I can describe it real quick. This is an eight foot bench in front of me. And to my right, about six, seven foot away is my electronics bench where I do uh, vintage stereo repair that I buy. It's kind of a hobby of mine, fixing, fixing vintage stereos. Um, let's see, in front of me where the camera is sitting, on that side of the uh, my shop is another eight foot bench and uh it has the sig cougar that i have to take out and <laughs> paint yet i've been procrastinating on that trophy case uh all in all uh about 600 square feet of shop that i can use it was like a thousand square feet of just open space where i could build wherever i wanted but I started sectioning it, sectioning it off. Uh, I got um, my music room over to the north side of the basement here, and that's my stereo and my guitars and stuff like that. Uh, then there's tons of airplanes stored over here to my left, way back underneath the stairway. And to the west side is another storeroom that's full of airplanes uh, and that's not including my barn out back and the garage that's hooked to the house but my working area for my shop is about 600 square feet uh, the next thing I was asked is about my yellow shelf over here what are the black things on the top of the yellow shelf and these are the black things. <laughs> These are uh, Dynamax ducted fans with OS91s on them. There's four of them up there like this. Uh, I haven't used them in oh, maybe 15 years or more. Just uh, don't have anything to, to use them in. But yes, yes, I do actually. I have a, a, a Byron's mig 15 f86 and a skyhawk waiting to be redone uh, and that's what these are for actually and i have a couple jet hanger hobby jets uh f86 a mirage uh f9 f cougar they all need to be done and <laughs> i got motors up there for them or fan units uh jet hanger hobby fans and kb 7.5s on them we put this away and there's a little uh, 15 size fan up there too that I'll probably never ever use that again and uh, the next question was is what are the wings that are sitting over here the yellow wings um, in the unboxing video you've seen them leaning up, leaning up against the cabinet but those are there to remind me to strip them down and redo them I'm going to use silk and dope on these there what they are, are the Andrew Aeromaster uh, biplane wings these were built I think that particular set of wings were built in the early 70s uh, the kit came out in like 1966 by it was de designed by Lou Andrews uh, Andrew uh, I can't remember the name of the company Andrew Aircraft Incorporated or something like that uh, but that's that's what those are okay now getting back to the Waco before I even got it out of the box I had to think about what motor I wanted to put on it and I believe in the unboxing video I was talking about this engine right here this is a ZDZ 60 RV it's fairly heavy I think it weighs something like five pounds maybe a little bit more five and a quarter 
But the problem with this particular engine is it's too long to fit in the cowl. If I try to do it, I'll have to cut a hole in the firewall for the muffler and the carburetor, and I really don't want to do that. I'm limited to, in the nose, 170 millimeters. And I think 170 comes right about to here. Right about, yeah, right about here on this engine. So I don't want to have to cut holes in my firewall. So basically, this 60 is out. I dug around a little more, which wasn't too much digging actually, and I found this old 50. Uh, excuse the extra noise, it's uh, my furnace kicks on and off. You, you're gonna hear that every now and then. But anyway, this is a QB50. I can't remember when I got it. I believe, God, eight years ago seven years ago and I had it on a top flight Mustang giant Mustang it flew it around pretty good um, it's a little low on horsepower it only has like four horse at 7600 rpm or something like that and uh, it flew it around nice uh, not real fast but I wanted to do more vertical maneuvers with it so I took this off it only has like six minutes of running time on it I took this off and replaced it with the DLE 55 rear exhaust rear intake. So that one's out. I went online and I decided to shop around. I checked out all the DLEs and uh, RCGFs and DAs and uh, I even found upstairs on one of my planes that I don't fly anymore a Quadra 52. But I don't want to go that route and my price point looking online was around 600 bucks that's what I figured it's gonna cost me for a decent engine so I, I checked them all out and I got to the point where I was looking at them and thought well the cowling is so big let me grab the cowl here I don't know what's gonna fall when I do this because I got the Waco wing stashed right there too uh, the cowling is so big, I mean, look at this dude. It's a it's good size. And I thought, well, a single cylinder engine would fit in there pretty easily, but it'd be, it would look a lot nicer with a twin. So I started looking at the, the twins out there and the DLE, and uh, the next one I looked at was the Valley View RC70. Uh, DLE is a 60. I compared the two and I decided on the Valley View, which I have right here. Just got it like a uh, day, two days ago. Two days ago. My days are kind of flowing in together with appointments and things and losing track of time here. I'll get it out for you so you can take a look at it. This is the VVRC 70 Twin. Okay, there it is. It looks really nice. The casting's real good. Uh, not a lot of excess flashing or anything like that. On, I think you'd find on cheaper motors. Red anodized prop hub, crankshaft hub. Uh, not bad. And the mounting plate is anodized. Pretty decent engine. Uh, my biggest concern was airflow coming into the cowling for the engine, and I have nothing to worry about as far as that goes. And you can see I can almost push this engine all the way through straight without turning it to the side, but there's plenty of room. And you can side to side, a lot of room for spark plugs, don't have to do any carving or anything like that. So it's a perfect fit. We get this off to the side. And uh, let's see, what else can I tell you about it? Not not much, really. It's You probably think it's going to be overpowered because it's only calling for, for a 50 to a 60 on the box for the Waco. Um, the 70, this 70 is the same size as the DLE 60 as far as displacement, uh, external displacement goes and it's it's a little bit lighter and it's about a hundred bucks less 
So I'm getting 10 more cc, uh, almost a half a horsepower more uh, for this engine. And it, it's probably gonna overpower it a little bit. So what my plan is to put on a bigger prop with less pitch and try to slow it down a little bit, slow the plane down a little bit. Cause I'd, if I use the largest prop they call for with the high with a high pitch, it's probably gonna fly like a rocket. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, let me put this off to the side and I'll bring out the fuselage. We'll start on the fiberglass plate. Okay, onward. The fiberglass plate that goes in the front, I marked it all out to the dimensions of the mount on the back of the engine. And using a ruler, square felt tip pen and the most handiest thing was micrometers that got everything very accurate so when i set the engine on there these little tiny pilot holes i have started line up perfectly in the center of each drill hole on the mount and i'm going to attach it to the firewall with five minute epoxy I was going to use 15 minutes so I have more working time, but my 15 minute, I got it out of the cupboard over here and the hardener was no good. I could heat it up and use it again, but why, you know, just throw it in the garbage and I'll buy some new ones later. So what I'm going to do is mix up some of this, some of this five minute epoxy. I got my little mixing cup and my stir stick and while I was cleaning up the stir stick I'm sitting here doing this with my exacto knife getting the old glue off I took a chunk of my finger with it <laughs> that's what the band-aid's all about and I don't think you need to see me smearing the glue on there and slapping this piece on there so I'm going to do that real fast and we can move on to the next thing which will be the air lines you can see that the engine's mounted. I got a little impatient. I wanted to see what it was going to look like with that twin on the front. So I went ahead and drilled the fiberglass plate. It's all glued on there and uh, measured it all out. It's at 171 millimeters. It's just a little longer than what they say, which comes out to about one washer width of depth that I have to take out. I used the standoffs from the engine that came with the engine and I had to stack three wash well four washers in behind it to uh, get it out far enough for the 170 millimeters but it's at sitting at 171 if I take one out I might be okay I might leave it in I don't know but what's going to happen is I'm going to measure out these standoffs with the washers and I'm going to have some new standoffs made and uh, shouldn't cost me too much for that and that'll put me exactly where it's supposed to go but that's what it looks like you can see it's mounted on there fairly accurate i hope <laughs> one thing i can't stand is when you're looking at a plane that you put together and it's all done you look at the nose and you see the engines cocked off one side or the other and that, that bugs me personally on my planes but there it is Looks something, let me just slide this up here. Looks something like that, somewhere in there. Okay, that should be it for the fiberglass plate. Let's move on to the ailerons. I'm going to start with the port wing first. They kind of show that in the preparations part. They're working on the port wing, sealing the covering material down. And I've already done that. And the first thing we have to do is remove some covering material off of this little area right here. That is where your control horn will sit, which is one of these guys. Oh, got a screw stuck in there, but that's okay. Which will sit in here like this, this way. It'll sit flush with this corner right here. And once you get the covering material cut out, there's a little piece of balsa wood on the very end that you have to relieve. So when that is, it'll be down here actually, because the horn sticks down for the aileron servo. But it have to be, it'll have to be flush with this edge. So when you cut that all out, 
you'll have to shave a little balsa out of there, not a big deal. Uh, let me go grab a knife and I'm gonna get started on this. Here it is. I actually grabbed the knife and started cutting and it's not a big deal. All I did was make an X in this hole right here. It's actually a rectangular hole and then both sides will look like this with a little lip right here. You have to relieve it on the bottom side of the aileron and trim it flush with the sides so the control horn will fit like that. Nice and flush. Not all the way down here. You don't want it that far down. You want it so this edge right, let me get this out of the way. This edge right here is level with the top edge of the aileron. Like that. The next thing they want you to do is to install the screws to hold this on. And when you do that, you put them in, you take them out, then you drop a couple of drops of CA glue into the threads to harden them up and then put your screws back in. Now, I'm actually at to that point. Um, what I did, you might not be able to see up in here, I drilled two pilot holes for my screws and I've actually already set the screws in and made the threads. So we're, we're down to the gluing aspect of the, of the threads. And I undecided on what glue I want to use. I think I'm going to use medium set. Just so it soaks into the wood a little bit better. You don't want to take the, the glue bottle and just slam it in there and chuck glue in there. Otherwise, it'll drip out and get on the inside of the covering material and ruin your finish. So you have to be a little careful there. I don't know. Those are awful small holes. Maybe I'll go with go with the thin. That might be a, a better idea. See which bottle is the best here. This one's about whipped. I'll go with this one. Okay, it's not... I usually use a little glue dropper, but I run out. So I'm going to have to be very careful when I do this. Okay, there's one drip of glue. I'm going to put one more drip in there to make sure it goes all the way through. There it is. Okay. Let me give it a little bump with the accelerator. And paper towel here to clean up the excess. All right. Let's set the screws in. Hopefully I didn't put too much glue in there, otherwise the screws won't go in. Move this wing out of the way. Get the proper screwdriver for the job. And run them in. One more to go. You might notice that these yokes are pinched in a little bit. It makes it kind of hard to put that top screw in. It gives you a little resistance, not bad. This one requires a little more pressure than the other one. Still quite a ways out. A couple more turns. There we go. I'm 
Let me double check that one. Pretty tight. There it is. And you can see that it points down below the wing, like so. Now they want you to do this to the other side. Um, I'm not gonna do the other side. I'm gonna do one side completely, uh, the hinging. Let's see what else they call for. I believe it's hinges. Yeah. So I'm gonna run through the hinges real quick. I'm gonna do one hinge and then set the aileron in in place permanently with uh, using a five minute epoxy to hold the hinges in. I'll show you how I prep the hinges and uh, put the glue on it and call it good. I'm gonna use 30 minute epoxy. I don't like using five minute because your working time is just too quick, so. Let's get started on that. I'm gonna pull the hinges out. Aileron out of the way. Try to pull the hinges out. They're stuck in there pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna cut away and try to get these hinges out. They're coming out pretty doggone hard, so give me a minute, I'll be right back. I prepped three of the hinges already. I have one more to go, and this is the one I'll show you how I do it. This one's a fairly free hinge. There's a lot of flashing on these too. You might want to scrape that off when you get to it. But let's prep them. What I take is just some petroleum jelly, and I pack the hinge. I've shown this before in different videos. And you fill up the creases and anywhere that the epoxy can seep into to lock this hinge up if it happens to push out of the hole and get into the hinge. I don't know how other people do it. Nobody's ever showed me. I just kind of start doing this on my own, trying to figure out a good way to keep the glue out. And once you see that the holes are filled with the petroleum jelly and the cracks are covered, what I do, you can use a heat gun or whatever you feel safer doing, but I just take a lighter and just quickly do that. And it turns the jelly into a liquid and it flows into the cracks, lubricates the hinge, and you just kind of gently pat off the excess and that's all there is to it. Now the hinges are prepped. Uh, there's one that I was talking about the flashing. This guy right here. Get rid of that. Don't need that. There, that pretty much takes care of that. Not the highest quality hinges in the world, but you get what you pay for, I suppose. Okay, those are good. Now it's a matter of mixing up some 30 minute epoxy. So let me get some mixed up. Uh, then I'll shave a little time off the video and uh, we'll get going on that. I have my 30 minute epoxy mixed up. Remember I said earlier I didn't have any 30 minute and the hardener was all dried up and stuff. So I went to get some 30 minute, checked locally, nothing around. The closest place I found was 60 miles away. So I drove 120 miles for a small, couple of small bottles of 30 minute epoxy. That's what happens when you live in the middle of nowhere. Okay, what I do is I'll start with the aileron, put some in the hole on each one and it'll slowly work its way down. I try not to get any on the outside edges, but it happens. And what I need is something to poke down inside of this thing. Oh, what do I have? Apparently nothing. 
Whew. Misplaced all of my stuff, evidently. Let's see. Uh, I must be out of toothpicks because I don't see any of those either. Interesting. Oh well. It's slowly draining into the holes, so I'll keep going. Usually two dabs in each hole takes care of pretty much all of the epoxy I'll need. Now you see I got some on the outside of the hole. I don't try to get rid of it real quickly, but I do. I use some denatured alcohol on a paper towel and I wipe it up around the holes. Okay, for the hinges, I just wipe a real light coat on them and shove them in the hole as I go. You don't want to put too much because it will bubble up and get around your hinge and the hinge joint. You don't want that. Okay, just a light coat. Since it's 30 minutes, it gives you plenty of time to work. Got a little extra on here. I'll scrape some of that off. And stick that in. Okay. Clean my fingers off. I'm going to do the same thing to the wing. I'll drip some into each hole. About that much. You can see just enough to stick to the end of my stir stick. That one's kind of short. Just like that. I'll clean up the excess when I'm done. That one didn't have a lot, so I'm putting a double dose in there. Come back to the first one, same thing again. Much all that dripped off into the back into the cup. Next one. Okay, that's all four of those. I'll wipe up the excess. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing to the hinges as I did going into the aileron. Just enough to give them a light coat. Almost done. All right, set that epoxy out of the way. 
Now we slide these on. I'm not going to worry about the angle, which if they're twisted around or anything like that as far as the hinges go. I'm just going to slide it into the holes. And then, I got a little bit on my fingers and on the aileron here. Then I just work the aileron and the hinges will line up on their own. Just like that. I'm not sure how much aileron throw I'm going to need, but it looks like it's going to want to bottom out. The horn wants to bottom out on the bottom side. You can see where I pushed it a little hard and it wrinkled up. But there's supposed to be a cutout right there, so maybe that'll work out okay. But I will leave it. Push the aileron tight so there's very little gap there. You don't want too much of a gap. A little bit is okay, but too much causes drag and might induce flutter, so you don't want that. Okay, to make sure it doesn't move, I use some masking tape. And I just kind of hold it down so it won't slide out any further. I don't pull it in tighter. And that should be quite enough, I think. Maybe a couple strips on the top. And that'll take care of that. Well, that's basically it for the hinges and the control horn. I'm going to have to wait about, I don't know, I'll probably have to set an hour and then I'll come back to it and we'll move on to installing the servo. The wing is totally done. Uh, <laughs> I know I was going to show you all of it, um, but what happened is that the battery in my microphone went dead and I didn't know it. And I went and finished everything up and reviewed the footage to find out there was no sound. So this is what I have. <laughs> but I will be showing you the rest of it on the starboard wing. But it's all done. It's set up. Hold on a second and I will show you what I got. Everything is... It's functioning properly, a lot of throw, but I haven't uh, adjusted throw limits or anything like that yet. So uh, that, that'll that be coming up probably in the final stages. I'll set all the control uh, surfaces and the limits and all that other good stuff later. Since I am right here, uh, I'll let you know what I'm using. I'm using a, for a, a radio that is, I'm using a a 14 a Futaba 14 SG transmitter and the receiver I won't show that but I'll read it to you it's a Futaba R7008 SB it's an S bus high voltage receiver but I'm going to use it in the analog setting for this plane all right let's get back to the wing uh, I'll pick up where I left off but I'll be using the starboard wing you can see that I outlined the opening where I need to cut it out. And it goes all the way around to this side of the face of the, tra the trailing edge of the aileron, where the aileron goes. And what I do is I just start cutting it out with a knife. I don't go all the way to the edges. Here's a spar right here I have to jump over. And I'll take that to the end. Try to cut that off. OK. 
Okay. Now I'll come to the bottom and open this up. Broke the tip off my knife. That's going to be a problem. Okay. Open this up a little bit. Right back here on the top is another spar that you have to cut through. I'll remove the covering so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. This spar here and this one back here, they're very thin pieces of balsa. You shouldn't have any problem with that. And what I'm going to do is, since I cut it on the inside, I'm just going to slice in from the inside to the outside edge. Now I'll seal it down. Okay. I don't know if my sealing iron is hot. We'll find out. Oh, just about hot enough. This doesn't have to be perfect because nobody's going to see it. Which is good because I'm doing a terrible job here. Okay. And around this back side. That's pretty good. I'm not going to try to get it any better than that, I don't believe. I just don't want it to lay up against the control rod, which it won't. Now to remove these little pieces of spar. I don't want to get too aggressive on it. I have to lay the wing down here. Okay, the other one was almost cut through. Grab my knife, whatever I did with it, right here, and I'm going to get that piece that fell inside out. And you're left with that kind of a hole. Okay, see that? That's all you have to do. I'm going to wipe the the blue off of there just some denatured alcohol it's only a felt tip sharpie so uh, let me do that and I'll come back and we'll work on installing the servo I have the ailerons attached I kind of advanced the wing up to a point where we can do the final assembly and, and get it over with what I'll be using for a servo is a high-tech HS 645 MG and that will sit in here like so I'm not going to run the wire yet so it'll be like that and uh, I've already set the screws into the mount and uh, after that I put some CA glue into the servo screw holes to, to harden them up a little bit so that's all done Next will be the rod, the control rod with the two ball link ends. And just like before, I ran the ball links on the thread till it bottomed out, marked it, then marked it halfway, and then threaded the ball links back on halfway on each to each mark. And it's important to note that the ball links are not going to be in line with each other. They're going to be offset a little bit to match the servo since it's on an angle all right we'll put the servo in it's going to be uh, take it in and take it on and off type of thing for the, the servo arm to get everything aligned so I'm going to run the, the servo mounting screws in and this one is the hex head using a, a ball driver and I'll put these on there's one uh, next will be uh, 
the, the other three screws and I'll do that off off camera and then we'll come back and we'll set up the the linkage to the aileron I mentioned before how I use a wire like this to pull the servo wire through and that's why I kind of left it out I it doesn't matter to me whether if the servo is in or out it depends on how much room you have and in this case there's plenty of room to do it after the servo is installed so that's what I'm going to do I'm running the wire up and through there it should be coming up in here fairly quickly if I can find it there it is and all I do is hook the, the servo wire on sometimes I just loop it around and other times like this I'm going to go in between the wires there's a little gap here that I can stick the the hook through and it's not cooperating that figures there we go and I'll just pull that out And there it is. I'll pull it down so you can see that it's out this far end. Looks like it's pretty good. It's, I think the, the retainer might be stuck on something in there. There it goes. Now it's loose. Okay. Put this back into place and we find center again. What I need to do now is attach the ball length to the arm. And this is not the correct arm that I want to use. The arm I have preset for this particular one is drilled to the second hole from the center. So uh, let me find the correct arm and then I'll continue on by mounting the control rod to the servo arm. Like I said before, the servo arm is pre-drilled. I've already done all that. To fit this screw, I'm not sure what the size is. And as far as the mounting sequence goes with the screw, uh, you take the screw, add the washer that they provide, insert it through the ball link. Make sure it's the right direction here and install it onto the arm. See, it feels a little tight. Yeah, it's a little tight. I might have to re-drill that. Okay, I re-drilled it, ran the screw in, I put the little lock nut on there and I need to tighten that down. And just a matter of getting it done. I'm not left-handed, so this makes it a little awkward. So I'm gonna do it like this. If I slip, I don't wanna go through my <laughs> wing with my screwdriver. Just about there. That's pretty tight. I don't want it too tight, I want it nice and loose. Okay, my servo is already preset at neutral, so I'm going to slide the ball link through. Try to slide the ball link through. It's giving me a hard time because my fingers are not small enough for this job, evidently. Here we go. And neutral is about there. So it appears that I need to thread the ball link on there just a little bit more and uh, we'll see what happens that looks like about three turns oh I'm not too sure now I might have moved my center 
on my servo. Okay, give me a moment, and I'm gonna figure this out, and I'll be right back. I have my cent center on my servo, finally. And now let's see where the ball link is gonna sit. Oops, getting a little klutzy here. Install the ball link, let's see where this sets. Okay, come on. It's uh, being uncooperative here. Huh, very strange. There we go. It's going to be close. It looks very close. All right. Take the Allen wrench and tighten up the screw. If it'll go. It doesn't seem to want to thread through. I must be off by a little bit. Maybe if I use the ball, it'll go better. There it goes. Finally. Tighten that down. We'll see where it sits as far as neutral goes. Okay, got a little movement on the servo arm because it's not screwed down. Looks like it needs to come out uh, maybe a turn. So the easiest way for me to do that would be just to do it from the arm. One full turn. Come on, get back on there. There it is, one full turn. Put it right where I wanted. Oh, get this down into the frame. So uh, that should do it. I will install my screw to hold the arm on the servo. And when you're doing this type of thing, make sure you want to hold your screwdriver at a little bit of an angle so you don't put a dent in the edge of your your hatch. Tighten that down really good and tight. Let's see what we have. Looks pretty good. Right dead center. Good to go. Onto the hatch. The hatch is pre-drilled. Has four little holes here for your screw or the screws and what I use is a scratch all poke little holes into the covering material where my screws are supposed to go and I can't see this one there it is okay with those in place drop that on there and I'll, I always like to pre-drill things so I have my drill set up with a small drill. It just makes it easier to thread. You just have to make sure you don't go all the way through the top of the wing. Like so. All right. That's it for that. Now they give you four little mounting screws right there. Get this out of the way. Let's 
see if I can get them pre-started here. Uh, yep, that's gonna go. And then the other hatch, one of these screws, well they're supposed to be set up as a, a Phillips head and on one of the screws on the other side it didn't have anything on the end except a round button. <laughs> so I had to find a replacement screw for that. Little manufacturing defect. I might have to change out screwdrivers, I'm not sure. Yeah, this will work. I'll run these in real fast. Kind of long-winded screws for a hatch, but they'll work nevertheless. You know, there's a little bug, winter time, and got little flies going around. Well, it's supposed to be winter. At the end of winter, beginning of spring. A couple days ago, we had about three inches of snow. And today, you just went outside just a minute ago, and uh, it's beautiful out. Almost a good day to go flying. It's like 60-some-odd degrees with no wind. Pretty nice. But I need a plane to fly, so I have to do this. Okay, there it is, guys. Uh, hatch is on. Aileron is good. What I always look for is excessive lash, gear lash. And uh, I thought this little bit of movement was gear lash, but it's not. It's the ball links themselves have a little wiggle to them. But it's not much. I'm not worried about it. This isn't going to fly that fast anyway, so that's the bottom wings. I don't think there's anything more to say on it. Uh, let's see. I don't know what I did with my manual. Here it is. And looks like scoop. Okay, I still have to do the scoop. Almost forgot. Shut my radio off here. Okay, the scoop, little plastic scoop. What I like to do is use an X-Acto knife and go around the edge and snap all the plastic off. And uh, how I do that, see if I can find my stuff. I wasn't prepared really to, to do the plastic part. I use a ruler and I lay it down on the edge. I don't know if you can see this or not, like this. And I'll pinch it together and I'll take my knife and I'll just score it like this and then snap the plastic off. You have to be careful on these um, exit guides, I guess you would call it. You have to be careful with those because they're clear plastic with paint on the inside. And if you move them or bend them too much, the paint will chip off this the back side here and leave a clear spots and you'll end up having to fix that with some white paint not a big deal but it's a it's a pain in the butt when you don't really expect that so let me cut this out and we'll glue this in place I have it all cut trimmed out opened up on the end I'm gonna set it where I want it here just to make sure it's in place pretty much centered I'm going to use a uh, quick set CA with a little nozzle on the end and just put a drip and work it around like that. Leave that alone for a second. Do the other side. Can't see what I'm doing here. There it is. Let that sit and uh, harden up. And we'll move on to whatever's next. And I should have looked at that when I had the manual out. Let's see what we have next. All right. 
it shows the hatch, the scoop, and now we're looking at the landing gear. This ought to be interesting. It's a little different. Uh, landing gear, wheel pants. Uh, Plastic parts galore. Okay, let's move on to that. Well, let's get to it here. Fuselage is up, and all the parts they list they're listing in the manual. The the landing gear, the four screws that hold them on. Let's see. Strut covers, fairing that goes against the fuselage. These are the bottom fairings that go against the wheel pants. And the wheel pants are up here. Let's see what else I have to say. I'm going to skip to the next page if I can. Then it goes into uh, how to install the plastic parts. I've never done nothing like this before. Uh, the closest thing was an ABS cowling on a Midwest Pit Special, I think. <laughs> that was when I was 11 years old. So, let's get started. The first thing they want us to do is move this, some of this stuff out of the way. Is to open up some holes in the bottom. And you'll see that I've already done two right here. And I need to do these last two, so here goes. And these are where the landing, landing gear bolts go in. Hold down bolts for the landing gear. And I'm cutting with, I'm not cutting it all the way to the outside of the, the hole. I'm making it smaller. And I'm just going to run my knife and make some slots like this. So when I seal it down, it'll contour nicely to the inside of the hole. Okay. Uh, I have a cold, so it's making me itch my nose a little bit. And... This is just a monocoat sealing iron with the round boot on it. The round shoe, I guess you'd call it. And it gets into these circular type areas quite well. Seal this down real fast. Try to. It's only a thin layer of balsa skin right here it looks like what I don't know in in standard measurements it'd be like 332nd or whatever equivalent is in metric more than likely it is a measure measured in metric okay need to tuck it a little bit more I think that's probably gonna be good enough for now just to get it so it's sealed down all right that's the first hole the next hole is the landing gear slot that's right here and a looping hole for the screw where did i put my knife i can barely see it try to do a decent job with it so that part And over here, and up over here, I really can't see what I'm doing, so hopefully this comes out okay. I came a little closer to this upper edge right here than I want, but... No one's going to see it. I'm going to seal that down real quickly here. 
Now I need to do my little cutting tricks here in the corners. Okay, that goes way back. And this comes all the way out, and this comes all the way out. Like so. Then around this round, semi-round loop. Hopefully that has it. Find out here real quick. And around this edge. Something like that. I'm not sure how much of this is going to show after the plastic fairings go on, so I'm going to do a fairly neat job. Attempt to. Okay, there it is. All done. Hopefully, everything will go together right. Now it's a matter of taking the plastic off the landing gear, sliding them in, and putting in the four screws. So I'll be right back. We're getting close to the end of part one. And, uh, I think we'll finish up just by installing the gear and we'll call it good for part one. So let's get on with that. Flip the fuselage over. And this is really a nothing type of deal. It's a uh, slide the landing gear in, put the screws in, have a 30 millimeter, uh, four by 30 millimeter, I believe it is. And that goes to the inside, which would be here, and a 20 millimeter length on the outside. On the cap screws, there are a flat washer and a lock washer. The book shows a, the flat washer and, and the lock washer. However, there wasn't any in the kit. So I had to go to my parts bin and dig out some flat washers and lock washers okay let's get on with this this is no big deal it's a matter of sliding in the gear grabbing the hex wrench zipping them on down I will put uh, some Loctite on these screws when everything is set up and done well that one's being a little bit a little bit tight there we go and as you can see that's there's not much to this kind of a no-brainer thing one more to go and what I'll do is I'll pre-fit the plastic parts and Make sure everything is going to go on properly. And then I'll remove the landing gear screws and reset them with some Loctite. That will be a permanent thing once they're, once everything else is ready. Okay, tight enough. Set it up on its up on his gear there it is uh, in part two we'll start off with uh, looks like see the landing gear strut covers wheel pants uh, 
fairings, plastic fairings, things like that. Uh, I'll show you a little bit on how I like to cut them out. Hopefully it works out. So uh, I guess that'll do it. So until next time, have a good one.